John had a vision of an open door to heaven, and I heard the prophet-like voice that had spoken to me before, saying, Come up here, and I will show you what must happen afterwards. At once I was caught up in spirit. The throne was there in heaven, and on the throne sat one whose appearance sparkled like jasper and carnelite. Around the throne was a hollow as brilliant as an emerald. Surrounding the throne, I saw 24 other thrones, on which 24 elders sat, dressed in white garments and with gold crowns on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings, and peals of thunder. Seven flaming torches burned in front of the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. In front of the throne was something that resembled a sea of glass like crystal. In the center and around the throne, there were four living creatures, covered with eyes in front and in back. The first creature resembled a lion. The second was like a calf. The third had a face like that of a man. And the fourth looked like an eagle in flight. The four living creatures, each of them with six wings, were covered with eyes inside and out. Day and night they did not stop exclaiming, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to the one who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down, 
before the one who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They throw down their crowns before the throne, exclaiming, Worthy are you, Lord our God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things. Because of your will, they came to be and were created. <coughs> the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy, holy, holy Lord, mighty God. Holy, 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 holy Lord, mighty God. Praise the Lord in His sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His strength. Praise Him for His mighty deeds. Praise Him for His sovereign majesty. Responds, Holy, 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 holy Lord, mighty God. Praise Him with the blast of the trumpet. Praise Him with lyre and harp. Praise Him with timbrel and dance. Praise Him with strings and pipe. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, mighty God. God. Praise Him with sounding cymbals. Praise Him with clanging cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Alleluia, this Holy, 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 let us all stand. Alleluia. Then the other servant came and said, Sir, here is your gold coin. I kept it stored away in a handkerchief, for I was afraid of you, because you are a demanding man. You take up what you did not, what you did not lay down, and you harvest what you did not plant. He said to me, With your own words, I shall condemn you, you wicked servant. You knew I was a demanding man, taking up what I did not lay down, and harvesting what I did not plant. Why did you not put my money in a bank? Then on my return, I would have collected it with interest. And to those standing by, he said, Take the gold coin from him and give it to the servant who has ten. But they said to him, Sir, he has ten gold coins. He replied, I tell you, to everyone who has, more will be given. But from the one who has not, even what he has 
good faith and away. Now for those enemies of mine who do not want me as their king, bring, bring them here and slay them before me. After he had said this, he proceeded on his journey up to Jerusalem. With the brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Our gospel for today speaks about another parable similar to the parable of the ten talents. There was this nobleman who gave his servants ten gold coins. Usually, we give our reflection on this gospel about the third servant who did not do anything regarding the coins given him and he was condemned. But for our sake, on our retreat, here in the Holy Land, we will focus our reflection not on the third servant, but on the first servant. He was given ten points, and when his master returned, he was able to give ten more points. That is why he was given the charge of ten more cities. We are the good servant. We were given the gold coins and we were able to deliver. Meaning to say some of us here are only one or more than one year in the priesthood. Some are 5, 10, 20 or 30 more years. 30 years more. But then if we still remember during our ordination we were all filled with joy, zeal, and enthusiasm. And we all promise that we will do our best. We will give our best. We will try our best. And surely, during those years in our ministry, we gave our best. We were able to do our pastoral programs, our pastoral activities. We, we were able to celebrate uplifting and solemn liturgies we were able to serve the poor <coughs> but then during those times in our service to the church we see ourselves maybe as sinners we see ourselves maybe as people would like to see us not according to what Jesus sees us to be as his good servants but in this gospel, the Lord is telling us we are His good servants. No matter what people may think so or say so, and sometimes no matter what our brother priest may say so, and sometimes maybe no matter what our bishop may say so, we are good priests even if we may not think so. Even if our conscience may sometimes accuse us of something. Because according to the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, no matter what our conscience charges us with, God is greater than our hearts. God is greater than our hearts. In our trip yesterday from <coughs> to Petra, from, uh, from Amman, and also in our trip going here, we had our sharing, and uh, during the sharing, some priests joyfully shared that it, they are very happy to be here. Not only because it is their first time for some of them, but also because it is mere, it is quite a joy to be with your brother priests. But also. <clears throat> Some of us shared our pains, some of us shared our hurt feelings, some of us shared difficulties in the relationship with brother priests. Maybe because instead of seeing what is good in each one of us, some priests would rather see what is wrong. Some priests would rather see the faults 
the sins of his fellow priests. May the brother priest, Jesus is a sinful priest. Jesus never dwell on our sinfulness. Jesus never dwell on our faults, on our failures, because that is the nature of God. God is love. God is mercy. And no matter what other people may say, and no matter what we ourselves may say, God sees us as His good priests. Perhaps, if we will look at the story of Zacchaeus, that was our gospel yesterday, and now we are in, we are in Jericho. People saw Zacchaeus as a sinful man. The religious leaders during that time saw Zacchaeus as a public sinner. But did Jesus saw Zacchaeus as a sinful man? Did Zacchaeus invite Jesus into his house? Jesus invited himself to the house of Zacchaeus because Jesus saw something good in Zacchaeus. Despite what other people and what the religious leaders were saying, Jesus something, saw something good in Zacchaeus. And because of that experience, it, it triggered the conversion of Zacchaeus <coughs> because he experienced the goodness of Jesus to him. Because he saw that Jesus was looking at him with love, it triggered his <coughs> conversion. Perhaps if we begin to see ourselves as good priests, if we begin to see our fellow priests with goodness, if we stop looking at each other's fault, failures, misgivings, if we begin to see ourselves as good, just as Jesus saw us, see us as good priests, then it will also begin our conversion, our better relationship, our better brotherhood. Jesus always see us as good people. No matter what our conscience tells us, no matter what our conscience charges we, because God is always greater than our hearts.
Savior's command in form of his own picture in a few days. Amadamitsu Masalamika Sambari.